It's March the 29th, uh, 2021. I'm Dana Durmford, your host. Welcome, everybody. You can call in if you feel like it at 709-589-4406 in Canada. I'm Canada. I'm Canadian. How's it going, eh? We don't actually talk like that here, but the world <laughs> thinks we do. Hey, how's it going? Hey! Well, it's the day after Three Mile Island, 42nd anniversary. 42nd anniversary. Drop dead, mad Ed. And Three Mile Island was once too cheap to meet her. Of course, it never was. And now too toxic to clean up. Okay. Now, probably the scariest picture of Three Mile Island is this picture. Does anybody know why that's a scary picture? Too late, I'm going to tell you. It's scary because it's surrounded by farms. See all the farms? It's always releasing radiation from these nuclear power plants. They get sucked up by the food and they poison you and your communities. Now, you're going to see the word cancer a lot. Saying, I don't see that much cancer increases, blah, 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 blah. In fact, there's one study that says they expect a cancer increase for men, but not women. <laughs> women are immune to cancer. That's a new one. I've never seen that before. And so I sent out my deepest sympathy to the victims. And there's 1,800 diseases you can get from radioactive fallout. So there's uh, heart problems and liver problems and lung problems. There's respiratory and pituitary and thyroid and adrenaline gland problems. There's Alzheimer's and dementia and autism, Down syndrome and diabetes. There's up to 1,800 illnesses will show up typically before cancer. Okay, good morning, everybody. Michael, Jeff, John, Dana Nasana, Misty Cat, Elaine. And Elaine is referencing uh, at the beginning of the comment section, people to a video. You'll see Tripwire in my last video. You have to go to the most recent comments because some, for some reason it's hidden there. And I'll put a link to Moral where he put out a song, a video, music, and my audio. It's done a super nice job on it. Hi, Jeff and everybody. Good morning. John Davis. Hi. So this is a great amount of documentation. We're just going to pile right into it because we've got a lot to get through. Hi, Kevin. Norman, Mr. Norman, Mike Norman, thank you again for your support. Uh, it's huge, everybody. So the farmlands are scary because these plants are always hemorrhaging radiation out and cancer is... Uh, just one of 1,800 illnesses you're worried about. So another scary picture of Three Mile Island is a playground close to Three Mile Island, a nuclear power plant. And, of course, your community, that's a scary picture again, where a community where the radioactive fallout is going to land always in the community from all the releases. Every time you change the fuel, you saturated the community with radioactive fallout. The common spent fuel pools are always hemorrhaging about 120,000 liters. And each liter, you're talking about billions of atoms being released into the environment. Again, that's what makes the farmers feel so scary. You'll see, if you look up pictures of nuclear power plants, what you see is 90% of them are surrounded by farms. That's actually not an accident, right? And so people were smart to protest. Now, for 30-odd years, they bombarded you with stuff like the symptoms, Simpsons 
First off, if that's a fuel rod, he would have died immediately. Just from the neutron burst and gamma shines and x-rays, zero possibility survive. Now, he is a good depiction of a nuclear plant operator. That's the type of person they're looking for. They're not going to hire nuclear scientists are not going to take that job, right? Nuclear academics are not going to take that job. You get a high school education, no other education, and they give you on-the-job on training. That's typically how you become an operator, because if you know what's going on, you won't want the job, right? And then we got 60 years of our loved ones and our children being indoctrinated, thinking radioactive fallout will turn you into a Hulk or Spider-Man or Superman or the, the Wolverine or something like that. Incredible deception, incredible betrayal and everybody who buys their children's these costumes don't understand the harm they're actually doing. Okay. So first off, this is what, I didn't see many stories at all. That's why we're doing the show today after, because you get all the stories from the anniversary and come out and get them in their lives, right? And this year, again, what we see is very few stories. And uh, typically, you see this little blurp blurp today in history, March the 28th. America's worst commercial nuclear accident with a partial meltdown. Always those words, partial meltdown. Inside the Unit 2 reactor, three, in, inside, inside. You know, it's, what this, it's a very subtle thing, isn't it? Inside. Why would you say that word? Partial meltdown inside the Unit 2 reactor. So trying to frame the narrative, there's nothing got out, right? A Three Mile Island plant. Not Three Mile Island nuclear power plant, but Three Mile Island plant. So again, America's worst commercial nuclear accident, right? Wrong. And now, now Three Mile Island is brutal, and that's what the show I'm going to show you. But the worst accident in America is Santa Susana which is 60-something years ago, 52, 62 years ago, it was Santa Susana. And the Santa Susana was considered 460 times more releases than Three Mile Island. That doesn't mean Three Mile Island is nothing to worry about. That doesn't mean Three Mile Island didn't cause extreme and extensive damage. That doesn't mean Three Mile Island no longer matters because it 100% unequivocally was an event that contaminated all those communities. We'll talk about that. And 50 years later, because this, this is an older story, the contaminated site has yet to be cleaned up. So there, one thing you seen yesterday was all of them said the same thing was uh, America's worst commercial nuclear accident, but Santa Susana was a commercial nuclear reactor. And they're just doing that. In other words, a, a, a meltdown at a, another reactor, if it's not commercial, doesn't matter. Oh, the radioactive fallout no longer matters if it's not a commercial reactor. See how they frame the narrative. And you'll see that throughout today, this kind of framing of the narrative. So 10 days before Three Mile Island melted down was uh, a famous movie came out. Uh, ten days following the movie's release, which was the China Syndrome, right? Ten days later, there was a China Syndrome. That's why you see him framing the narrative earlier where they say inside Reactor 2. Really subtle, but a very effective way of dumbing down the population and disarming the population. Physically began to melt. Now... One of the things you want to remember, but what, what is a meltdown? Well, temperatures could reach four, and he did, f at least 4,000 degree temperatures. 4,000. And, and even up to 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Now, at 4,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, which is what it actually reached, what happens? It actually melts. And so that's important. Remember that for the rest of the story. Three Mile Island disaster, 
disaster. Meltdown led to radioactive gases being leaked. This is not leaked. You know, like look up the definition of the word leak. It doesn't have anything to do with a nuclear meltdown. Stop nuclear power now. So people rightfully were protesting, but they weren't aware of the actual carnage that was going on. This was hid away from the population. And again, when you look at Three Mile Island, look in the background, you see the farmland. It's extraordinarily important because what does a farm will poison in its in a 40-year period, how many people did the farm poison, see? Or farms, a.k.a. And it's not just the visible farms. You can see it's farms within a 1,000 miles are being poisoned. Some of the headlines back in the day, USAID sees a risk of meltdown and more radioactive gas is released. We'll get to all of this. Uh, radiation emissions and cancer incidents within 10 miles of Three Mile Island, within 10 miles. But the plume didn't stop at 10 miles. The plume doesn't go, oh, well, it's 10 miles. Let's give it up here. Some of that is still circulating around the globe. Uh, now, after Fukushima, there's quite a lot of reports from people when they came, because they evacuated, when they came back home, they had left their pets home, and their pets were dead. There's a lot of those stories. Uh, once again, you see him invoking the stupid robot as if somehow that's going to solve a massive facility. The robot is limited. It can't. These robots you're looking at were not capable of carrying out a single task needed for a meltdown. But you see that showing up. Now, the cleanup in August of, started in August of 1979. They ran out of the homeless people uh, within a couple of years and officially ended in December 1993, 10 years, and cost, um, well, it's over 10 years, obviously, but it cost about $1 billion, about $1 billion, about $1.5 billion, about $2 billion, because uh, um, they stole the money. Okay, and so... 89 or 79 to 89 is 10 years so 14 years it cost a billion dollars but it was only leaking uh come on right when you start looking at the actual numbers what you find out we survived three mile island not so fast did your children survive it did your loved ones end up with heart problems or liver problems or lung problems or respiratory or pituitary or thyroid or adrenaline or Alzheimer's or dementia or autism or diabetes or Down syndrome? And the list goes on, right? It's not just cancer. Do you get how it works? I'm, I'm sure you do at this stage. Return of the Idaho test reactor, rare win for U.S. nuclear energy. Now, I'll put that depiction there. Because that's the official depiction. Now, the thing about this, the thing about that is, the thing about that is, what the hell have I got done there? Oh, my apologies, I'm messing around with the camera earlier. So, at least 4,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, that's supposed to be the fuel rods that melt it down. Uh, at 4,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, that stuff doesn't exist. That stuff doesn't exist. It disintegrates at 4,000. It evaporates, it atomizes in aerosols at those temperatures. But it could easily get up to 9,000, which it probably did. Uh, they're very good at hiding. Some nuclear plants have closed in recent years. In Illinois, New York, New Jersey, approved subsidies. The Baylor commercial nuclear reactors. And they're considering carbon taxes, blah, 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 blah. They, uh, now they, they, they allegedly shipped the melted reactor core. You like this deception? They allegedly shipped the reactor core from Three Mile Island to Idaho National Laboratories, which is 890 square mile 
site, 50 miles west of Idaho Falls. The core from Pennsylvania, Three Mile Island, was buried there after it underwent a partial, again, you'll see these words constantly, partial meltdown. There's no such thing as a partial meltdown. You can't, it's contained in a vessel. So you can't have 4,000 degrees over here, but not 4,000 degree temperatures over there in the other side of the small, there's not big, that big of a vessel. Uh, you know, they're big, but when there's a time of 4,000 degree temperatures, they're not that big. First off, you can't move a reactor core. You can't actually, you're talking about so much radiation, it can't be done. You kill everybody on the highway, you kill everybody on the train. You can't physically get close to it, no matter what you put it in. That's the problem, right? This is why he built a sarcophagus over Chernobyl, for instance. This is why 62 years later, they still can't clean up um, Santa Susana. This is why 70, almost 70 years later, they're still trying to clean up Chalk Island. But somehow, magically, they fixed and removed and shipped the melted reactor core from Three Mile Island. This is an incredible fail. Now... In order to tell the story, you got to invoke Chernobyl and Fukushima and these other reactors. There, every, no matter what the nuclear meltdown severity, it's still nasty and terrible and brutal on species and animals and humans. So let's just quickly think about how radioactive fallout works. Chernobyl melted down Chernobyl was graphite, but they closed 9,000 farms, 9,000 farms in Ireland, Scotland, United Kingdom. 3,000 miles away, they closed 9,000 farms because of Chernobyl. And by proxy, then, they should have closed every farm in France and Spain and everywhere else in between, right? Because that's how it works. You can't... It didn't fly all the way and then just land over United Kingdom, Ireland, and Scotland. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is try to get you thinking about other stuff besides cancer when it comes to Three Mile Island. So looking back at Chernobyl, there was a lot of studies and the potential for disease initiation by inhaling whether it's beta or alpha or gamma or neutrons, it doesn't matter. In this case, you're talking about beta. So whether it's alpha or gamma or neutron particles, it's still going to have the same adverse side effects, right? So disease initiation. You get it in your body, your body attacks it with white blood cells for the rest of your life. It displaces red blood cells for the rest of your life. The red blood cells carry oxygen, nutrition throughout your body. The white blood cells constantly attacking the radiation in your body, trying to build a tumor around it for decades, causes your immune system to be compromised. You're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses and other stuff that would normally be harmless or innocuous or benign. So dental abnormalities in people living in radionuclide contaminated regions. This is like if you look around Britain, around the um, Sellafield nuclear meltdown in the 50s, what you see was a lot of people with really bad teeth. But that wasn't emblematic of all of Britain. That was emblematic of radioactive fallout zones. You've seen the same thing in Chernobyl, which also means you're going to see all kinds of adverse side effects if your teeth are being harmed by the radiation because they bioaccumulate like calcium say then it also might mutate stem cells in their bodies it might also um, get into their thyroid and they have mutated hormones going distributed throughout their body because that's what your thyroid is doing abnormal um, or congenital eye defects from radioactive fallout so it's not just cancer see we know this from Chernobyl. Prenatal radiation-induced brain and cognitive impairment. 
So you have brain developmental problems for children from radioactive fallout. Down syndrome time clustering in Belarus after Chernobyl. So it's not just cancer, see? Which is what, Three Mile Island, that's the only thing they mentioned was cancer, right? And I say the word right a lot lately, I know somehow I got stuck into that one, my apologies. Effect of radiation on the reproductive system. The influence of post-Chernobyl followed on birth defects and abortion rates in Austria. Prenatal loss of 400 male fetuses in the Czech Republic. Followed from Chernobyl accident overall cancers in Finland, far away from Chernobyl. Prenatal mortality in England and Wales from Chernobyl, far, far away. Pregnancy outcome in Norway after Chernobyl, very far away. So Three Mile Island shouldn't be limited just to Three Mile Island surrounding areas, Harrisburg and Pennsylvania. Early infant mortality in West Germany before and after Chernobyl. Pregnancy, pregnancy outcome in Sweden after Chernobyl. Effects of the accident at the Chernobyl atomic energy plant on the outcome of pregnancy. Why was there so many studies like that? Now, probably one of the scariest studies you can imagine, which really does tell a big story, was trends in human sex odds at birth in Europe. It changed the sex ratio of males and females across Europe, which meant that the parents had to be poisoned by radiation for that to manifest, you see? And there's quite a few of these, not, I'll show you three or four, but there's a lot of these studies that from different countries shown the same thing around power plants just generally operating, including research reactors, secondary sex ratio and trends, which is uh, more males to females being born, which ultimately mean a smaller population, right? Because if there's less females, then there's going to be small. This, by the way, is going to be true for all the animals in Europe. This will be true for all the birds. This will be true for all the mammals, too. It's not just humans. It's insects and everything else. Uh, secondary sex ratio trends in associated gender-specific births near nuclear facilities in France and Germany. Update of birth counts. So they've seen a incredible discrepancy of male to females, trends in birth and birth sex ratio in the vicinity of research reactor in Germany. Human sex ratio at birth and residential proximity to nuclear facilities in France. So they're drawn a parallel to nuclear power plants without the meltdowns because of the radioactive fallout that's always coming out of them. They don't need a, melt, a meltdown to have this radioactive fallout. And this is, this is absurd. This is absurd documentation. It's absurd. And it's not like they didn't know this was happening. And that's, by the way, it's a 2016 study. We got two more. We'll jump back into the... But this is to give you context of Three Mile Island, right? Ionizing radiation, human gender proportions at birth, a concise review of the literature, a complementary analyst of historical and recent data, 2015 study, 2016 study, human sex ratio at birth after atmospheric weapons testing. So just a nuclear fallout from weapons testing changed the birth race, uh, male to female birth ratio uh, right around the entire planet. That's true for animals and birds and mammals and insects and all the other species. So whatever happens to humans will happen to all the other species. You'll never see that in the study because magically everything is immune except for humans and even then females. Radiation escapes from a nuclear plant. <clears throat> um, three mile on and what was once two, and I'll put that up on the big screen in case you want to get screen captures of it later. Scoot out with the Geiger counter for up the corner for a second. So it took 14 years and over a billion dollars to fake the cleanup because you can't actually clean up all the farms. They didn't even try, right? They didn't want to acknowledge it. 
uh, a plant and not atomic plant. It should be nuclear power plants, not a mishap. It's a nuclear event. And then it's not leaking, it's hemorrhaging. Contaminated steam. It's not contaminated steam. It's radioactive fallout. Right? So the way they framed, and by the way, that's probably one of the scariest pictures you're ever going to see is Ernie Gunnarsson. You know why he's laughing in that picture? Because he made a fortune with Lake Barrett, you know, balling off all the radioactive water when you stop looking. We'll cover that coming up. Now, Ernie Gunnarsson made the assemblies for Fukushima. This is Fukushima Reactor 4. Well, it was. This was a 190-foot building. Ernie Gunnarsson made the assemblies for the fuel pools that were at the top of the building. And he doesn't know that the picture to the right exists. He still believes it looks like the picture to the left. Now, uh, the fuel pools are to the right in that red depiction. That's the fuel pools at the top of these buildings. We're a 190-foot building in Fukushima. That's reactor 3. I just showed you reactor 4. That's reactor 3. That's gone too. So they hid this one. They buried it and pretend it didn't happen. In fact, they pretended that they're on top of that building I just showed you, which is reactor 3. They're pretending they're actually on top of the building that doesn't even exist. They're Again, they're pretending they're looking down on the pool of a pool that doesn't exist. Don't think they didn't lie about Three Mile Island. This is the norm, right? And Arnie Gunnarsson is notorious for saying that the building behind me was leaking. And he also used, uh, later in, a, in the later years, he was calling it bleeding. It's destroyed, it's all gone. It's not leaking, it's not bleeding. It's floating around the entire planet, see? And we got practically, I mean, this is a big story, is it not? The anniversary. There's nobody out there doing what I'm doing, doing a presentation on it. And I got uh, less than 40 people on my show. It just seems surreal, don't it? And something so important, to even today, right? They don't want people in Pennsylvania seeing this program. Pennsylvania nuke plant leak is plugged. Really? They said that about Fukushima, by the way. Fukushima reactor leaks were plugged with liquid glass. A mixture of sawdust and newspaper. A mixture of sawdust and newspaper to use to plug a leak in this building. These are both the official pictures on top of that. So don't think for a second they're not going to lie to you and try to deceive you. Yeah, but they're at work, but they can watch this from work. That's why I'm doing it in the daytime, see? Because it is a popular subject on anniversaries and around that. And I've been around a long time. There should be enough people knows that I exist at this stage after all these years. <laughs> but that's actually what's going on. So they fixed the hole with sawdust in a newspaper in buildings that don't even exist anymore, that are completely destroyed. So don't think they're not going to lie to you. And that was um, March, April. That was the very month after the meltdowns. They came out and said they fixed the leaks in the nuclear meltdowns with sawdust and newspaper. How do you make that one up, see? Uh, your view, how Dick Thornburg, which was the governor for 71 days when... Three Mile Island melted down. How he masterfully handled the Three Mile Island disaster. Well, first off, he admits he knew nothing about reactors or nuclear. Zero. He knew zero. He refused to issue a evacuation order because it could cause, could have created a panic. Now you have fifty to a hundred sirens around a nuclear power plant, so you can create a panic. Well, they didn't put them there. Activists forced them to put them there. You have evacuation zones, evacuation routes around nuclear power plants because you're supposed to panic. You only got a few minutes 
to get out of Dodge and leave your communities and your properties and your pets and everything behind permanently for your carbon-free nuclear. Atom alarm. Regulator and legislators mobilizing for Three Mile Island, the disaster that wasn't. Two million people around Three Mile Island, two million people got radiation doses. Two million people ultimately would have got sick. The radiation didn't stop there, but they're admitting two million people got dosed. Do you get what's really going on here? And he says the same as receiving a millirim, which a dose from an, a nuclear fallout, you don't measure it in millirims, you measure it in atoms and particles and atomic decays per second from those entities, right? That's how it's done, right? So if you got an atom land somewhere, it's pulsing energy every second. It could pulse it up to 50 feet away on top of that for a million years. So if it's in your property, it's pulsing at you all day, every day, 10, 20, 30 years later, just that single atom is going to cause you grief, right? You see my Geiger counter up there? It's screaming 290 counts per minute. That's actually screaming, see? So... Sun power, even back in those days, people kind of understood there's got to be a better way, right? There's got to be something better we can do. Yeah, I'm having a few problems on my end here today. Okay, now I'm just running through things. I'll go into more detail in a bit. Arnie Gunnison and Lake Barrett were responsible for this one. Testing of evaporator begins at Three Mile Island. The Three Mile Island nuclear power plant workers prepared Wednesday to begin testing equipment to boil off 2.3 million gallons of water contaminated in the nation's worst commercial nuclear accident, which was actually Santa Susana. It was 260 times worse. It's still melting down as far as we know. Small amounts of one radioactive element, tritium. Again, we see them frame the narrative of, it's not tritium-3H, which is what actually comes from the nuclear meltdown. They call it tritium, and tritium's natural, see? But the stuff that's actually, which is coming from a nuclear meltdown, the anthropogenic man-made material is called 3H, tritium-3H. That's man-made, and that's not... And they use that in nuclear weapons. So if you add tritium-3H to a nuclear weapon, you double the capacity of the weapon just by adding tritium-3H. But if you add tritium to a nuclear weapon, you might hurt the weapon. You might not be effective anymore. If you add tritium man-made, anthropogenic tritium-3H to the weapon... Now it's, now it's lethal. The release effects on the average person within 50 miles of three mile island will be less than the amount of radiation received from a year of watching colored television. <laughs> less than the amount of radiation received from a year of watching colored television. Radiation doesn't work that way. Color, like watching TV is radiant. We're talking about an anthropogenic radiation from ionizing radiation. A TV is not ionizing radiation. It's still not good for you. It's still not healthy. It's still an issue because of the way they got the, the frequency of the TV is set at the same frequency as a child's brain. So the, you can yell at your child supper is ready or time to go to school or whatever time to go to bed and the child doesn't hear you because its brain is synced with the tv it's not it like it's like it's sucked in you're sucking all the essence out of your child but the claim that watching tv is like watching tv by boiling off now first off the water is not 
it's not going to be tritium, <laughs> only left of that radioactive water, over 2 million gallons of it. It's going to be highly lethal water. That's why they're boiling it off. And they're not supposed to boil it off, for starters. They're supposed to store it for a billion years. It's an incredible betrayal. And then the other story I just showed you where there's Two million people confirmed radiated. Oh, they got the same dose as a millirim. These are absurd. It only takes an atom to screw up your entire immune system, a single atom. You don't measure it in millirims. You measure it in atomic decays per second. You measure it in atoms that are actually floating around that you ingest, that you end up drinking, that you end up eating with your food because it is assimilated to your food, see? This is why you only see 42 people on my show. There's a lot more than that watching, but they're only showing you 42 people, right? <clears throat> the danger zone was all of America and Canada. Because that's how radioactive fallout works. They're showing you a five mile evacuation device for pregnant women and preschool children. They didn't move them until three days after. The ultimate betrayal is not moving them for three days because now they ingested it. It could be decades before those illnesses manifest or is diagnosed. And a lot of people became transient. There was a lot of people that moved out of there too and never got tracked and it won't be tracked. The industry is not going to track unless they, like if they track you, they're not going to tell you. And when you die, they're going to dig you up when no one's paying attention. They're going to bring you to Los Alamos or one of those places. And they're going to ash you, which is burning your body. And they're going to sniff the air for radioactive materials. That's what they do. they got a long history of doing that. In fact, if you go actually look all the way back to Nagasaki and Hiroshima, they brought all kinds of victims to America and ashed them and sniffed the air. They kept doing it after they died for decades. The nuclear industry is nobody's friend. It hates us all equally. It's a plague. That's how you should describe nuclear. They're actually a plague. After adjusting for age, here's a study. Cancer incident among residents of the Three Mile Island accident. Once again, it's not... There's heart problems in liver and lung and respiratory and pituitary and thyroid and adrenaline. There's Alzheimer's dementia and autism, diabetes, Down syndrome. And the list is very long of illnesses and diseases, autoimmune deficiencies and injuries. And illnesses that will manifest and diagnose long before cancer. And take you out of the game long before cancer shows up. Cancer, your body attacks the, the radiation for decades with white blood cells and builds a tumor around it. All the other stuff can show up long before, but the cancer will still show up if you live long enough. In fact, right now, if you go to Three Mile Island uh, neighborhoods, everybody got cancer. Cancer incidences among residents. You get a kick out of this. After adjusting for age, and gender, and education, education, and smoking, and background radiation, an increased risk of leukemia was found among men exposed to higher maximum and likely radiation related to three mile exposure during the 10 days. 10 days. <laughs> it all, wow, it all disappeared after 10 days. This relationship was not found in women. An increased risk of leukemia was found among the men exposed to higher radiation. Women were not found to have increased cancer risk among those exposed to higher external radi external. Again, both of these were external. The men were external, the women were external. Which is what they've done for um, Nagasaki, Hiroshima. All the studies are external. <clears throat> so there was no evidence people were breathing. <clears throat> so they're saying in that study that only men, some men, we're at risk for leukemias, but not women. Women are immune to cancer, Dana. Not only that, first off, you wanted to rule out your age, your gender, your education. 
What does your education have to do with getting cancer from radioactive fallout? Then if you smoke, well, then you can't be included. And uh, background radiation is also in there to muddle the water, to get it down to next to nothing. They said what they've done, they should be arrested for it and put in jail for the rest of their lives <clears throat> for producing that study. These are, are scumbags. These are actually criminals. These are degenerate monsters. These are traitors to all species and their own loved ones. But to say that women are immune to cancer, that study is from 2011, for goodness sakes. It does show you, you cannot put too much trust in the scientific community. In fact, you have to do the opposite. You have to be terrified of the scientific community. Here's another pretty picture where they're checking people for radiation. Uh, this is just to get them to go away and leave them alone. See? How Dick uh, Thornburg masterfully handled, deceived and manipulated and tricked the population when it came to Three Mile Island. Dick uh, is named appropriately. Was governor of Pennsylvania when the accident of Three Mile Island nuclear plant happened on March 28, 1979. The column was written last year on the 40th anniversary of that incident, and Thornborn was 88, died on December 31st. We covered that. Uh, the 40th anniversary, this was last year's story, right? Uh, yeah, produced an irony, no fiction, so it's 42 years. No fiction writer, however brazen, could produce. And so it appears that the history of notorious Three Mile Island, an event that produced so much angst for so many years across central Pennsylvania, will end with a whimper, not a bang. The time about the closure of the nuclear power plant. And Thornburg is the guy with the glasses on it. He's a, a you can tell he's worked for the justice system and he was completely corrupt incredibly corrupt. He's there alongside of Jimmy Carter and a governor of uh, uh, the director of the U.S. Nuclear Agency to the left, right? And you can imagine what kind of scumbag he actually was. And the guy with the glasses on is a actual monster. He's Thornburg. At the time, averted the tragedy that millions feared and expected a nuclear Armageddon. So they blow it out of proportion because unless it's highly visible and people are dropping dead in the street, then there's no adverse side effects. That's how they portray it, right? <clears throat> On March 29, it was the governor for a scant 71 days when he received an alarming phone call. Metropolitan Edison's nuclear power plant uh, located on Three Mile Island, a mere 11 miles from the state capital in Harrisburg, had been the site of a nuclear accident. Other than a cursory briefing, he knew almost nothing about nuclear energy. Other than what he was told in a short conversation that day, he knew nothing about it. Barely into his 1979 tenure as a governor, he faced a challenge more consequential than any of his predecessors, the meltdown of one of Three Mile Island's two nuclear reactors. The state of emergency was the last from March the 8th to May the 9th. So they always like to say it's two weeks, right? It's not two weeks. It's over five weeks, yeah? Part of the governor's crisis management strategy was to manage the messaging to the public. Manage the messaging to the public. A messaging strategy. So they had a strategy, and there's actually studies on these people that do this. Thornburg himself described his contradictory assessments, telling the public either more or less that they knew of the accident and its consequences. These incomplete, misleading statements from the Three Mile Island management were particularly partially feeding the public panic, panic, and Thornburg, to his best, corrected it. He corrected it by saying, 
uh, by stopping the evacuation, which is, there was 150,000 still evacuated. As the crisis continued, Thornburg was unflappable, producing a performance almost universally laundered. In other words, he was a credible lawyer and deceiver and manipulator. At the time, one journalist wrote, Pennsylvania's Thornburg, extraordinary governor, Thornburg style, calm, deliberate, method he brought to the Three Mile Island. Another comment put his handling of the situation in political context. Suddenly, everyone is talking about how Thornburg would make a marvelous candidate for vice president on a Republican ticket in 1980. This was the nuclear industry now saying, well, look, he just covered up for us. We need him in positions of authority, see? Because that's how it actually works. You cover up for the nuclear industry, you get promoted. If you're a professor, you go from a little college to Yale or Stanford or Harvard, and then you're called upon for the next accident to come out and pretend there's no adverse side effects. <clears throat> he handled a tense situation where few folks actually realized the effects of a meltdown or its causes. Right, so there were few people understood what was going on, and he was his job was to make sure they had no way of understanding it. From the outset, the governor faced a big decision whether to evacuate two hundred thousand people in the immediate vicinity of Three Mile Island, an evacuation carrying inherent risk to life and limb. No, it's not. They evacuated millions of people for hurricanes. It didn't wasn't life and limb as well as increasing the already intense public anxiety about the accident, that he had to weigh against the possibility of damage a core meltdown would produce versus the damage to the nuclear industry. Ultimately, he incorrectly, what they say, he correctly refused to issue a general evacuation order despite political pressure on him to do so. He refused to do it because there was big kickbacks from the nuclear industry immediately. Suitcase full of money does a lot of bargaining chips. Thornburg sagely commented there was no Republican or Democratic way to deal with a nuclear crisis. Right, that's why we got uh, sirens around nuclear power plants. So people like this don't manipulate you. On the third day of the crisis, the third day, he recommended pregnant women and preschool children living within five miles leave the area that's the ultimate betrayal it's too late you still got to leave leave when you can but they should have been gone immediately the minute that they confirmed there was an event taking place that's the problem with nuclear that is a problem right you don't got you don't know which way you're supposed to run on top of that because they're going to lie and be deceptive and deceitful and dishonest and disingenuous the people that we, so the so-called authorities, I heard the farthest thing from authorities, they're monsters put in positions of authority by the industry to trick you and deceive you, manipulate you, so they don't get a black eye. It's the ultimate betrayal. Every facet of nuclear is the ultimate betrayal. The reason for Thurnberg's stellar performance was many, perhaps four were the most crucial. He refused to issue an evacuation order which could have created panic. Well, that's the point of it, isn't it? You have evacuations for hurricanes, don't create panics. You evacuate, right? That's the point of evacuation, so you can evacuate. He's a disgusting parasite. He had no right to live to be 88 years old. He had no right to live that long. He's a scumbag who destroyed just endless people's lives by his actions. He's worse than evil. He refused to issue a general evacuation order which could have created a panic. But that's why you got all the sirens around. Should we take down all the sirens around nuclear power plants so if they have a meltdown we don't create a panic? His public uh, comments reassured folks there was no cause for alarm when there was 100% unequivocally a cause for an alarm. And we got 44 people on the show. It's heartbreaking. 
that I work like a dog to tell these incredibly difficult stories because there's no one's actually honestly as honest as after doing what, like what I'm doing is showing you the endless documentation who brings it all together in a complete package. I don't lie to you in any facet of it. Don't mis exaggerate anything. I'm not misinterpreting. I'm very cautious. Everything's pre-done before we do the show. It's an absurd amount of work to do these programs. And I get 44 people on my show. Bless your hearts. God bless your hearts. Thank you so much. But you, you, you do understand that if I was wrapping shit on a stick, I'd have 30,000 people here right now yucking it up, right? Because they, they, would, they would shove me out there to dumb down the population. It's 100% censorship. It's disgusting. The people that are censoring me are cowards. These are cowards. These are disgusting maggots. These are parasites feeding on your children, raping your children. The people working at YouTube censoring me are actually at nighttime out there trying to rape your children. On the third day of the crisis, he did recommend the pregnant women and preschool kids living within five miles of Three Mile Island leave the area. The parents should have beat him unconscious for doing that. For keeping the children there for an extra three days. His public comments reassure folks that there was no cause for alarm. There was 100% cause. But he would remain, because there was two million people got dosed, and he played it down by saying it was equal to a millisiever. All two million of them will get sick because of that dose. But he remained vigilant and alert, reassuring people and being a visible presence. Being a lying, disgusting parasite, he refused to issue an evacuation order which would have created, which would have saved lives. He refused to issue an evacuation order which could have saved people an uh, absurd amount of misery and agony. Here's another plume model of the radioactive fallout. Health-related economic costs of three-mile accident. Well, the nuclear industry should have to pay for it. During the two-week period of the accident, about 150,000 residents were evacuated for reasons associated with safety and health. And during the two, they left on their own, by the way. During the two-week period of the accident. Well, as I showed you earlier, the, the accident was over five weeks long. That's a study trying to manipulate you and deceive you, see? There were some increases in consumption of alcohol, cigarettes, and tranquilizers. That's the ultimate betrayal to do a study and throw that out there. And you can see the people that done the study up there. That's the ultimate betrayal, the ultimate hate. Incident at Three Mile Island. York County evacuation plans are mapped. Well, today we have... Um, The Three Mile Island Unit 2 accident, another study, melting large sections of the upper core grid section. Well, you're talking four to 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. It doesn't just melt one section. They claim 26% of the core melted, 20,000 kilograms. 20,000 kilograms. Hydrogen was produced by oxidization of the cladding, the zirconium cladding, and support structures. It was released from the RCS the containment unit, ignited within the containment, producing a significant pressure pulse. Those kind of pulses would have blown it apart, would have blown a hole or cracked at minimum. Despite the serious damage to the reactor, studies have included the radiation released during the event has negligible effects on the physical health of individuals or the environment. Three Mile Island Nuclear Generating Station, surrounded by communities, over two million people were dosed at the Amito. Then they boil up incredibly radioactive water and claim that it was only tritium, not even tritium 3H, but tritium, and claimed it was like watching a color TV. Every parent should have slapped that person in the mouth. Here's a model of the plume, the cancer plume. The 
Here's uh, the Three Mile Islands, Susquehanna River, <coughs> Harrisburg, up here. So these are the estimates from the decimetrists under the funding with the court order that I uh, showed previously of where the plumes went. And the heaviest plumes are in the darkest red to the northwest. And then uh, there's some to the northeast and a little bit to the southeast. But there are other areas that are very, very low. And the numbers, uh, you may not be able to see this in the back, but the, the green, this green is zero. And the very darkest red goes up some of those tracks. Uh, the highest track is relative to zero, uh, 1,666 units. So there's quite a range according to the scale that they use. And the... So you're looking at the plume, radioactive plume, that they said didn't exist, right? Not only that, there was all kinds of pets died when he came back from the evacuation. Which meant you should abandon your property permanently when, you, when that happens. See? Radiation hazards in children, and even today you should abandon all of Pennsylvania. Radiation hazards in children. Lessons from Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and Fukushima. <clears throat> That's the ultimate betrayal really is because children are so much more vulnerable to radioactive fallout and the industry loves that therefore in the early days after the nuclear accident primary concern should be efforts to prevent the exposure of children to radioactive iodine no they say iodine because it has an eight day half-life there's 10 of them by the way 10 half-lives so 80 days but it's not iodine that you're worried about because cesium also aggregates in your thyroid glands that's got a 300 year life you're not worried about that either even though you should be because that and that's brutal that's nasty so is iodine it's nasty what you should be worried about is the curium isotopes that's the biggest byproduct of a meltdown not cesium not iodine and by the way the reactor's running uranium plutonium you'll never hear that mentioned in a single one of the studies uh, for them looking for it and curium killed all the dogs in all the studies all the puppies and all the dogs were died after being exposed yeah puppies that's right and we're talking like hundreds of thousands because radioactive iodine preferentially accumulates in the thyroids yeah but so does cesium 137 and 134 for starters so does many isotopes bioaccumulate in the thyroid gland that's the deception they've been telling you to lie for 75 years they can't tell you the truth because you're going to say, wait a second, just lied for 75 years. A fetal dose of 100 millisieverts may increase the risk of effect on brain development. It's actually a single atom, not 100 millisieverts. Like a millisiever, it's hard to convert it to atoms. Say 150 atoms per millisiever. But even then, it doesn't do it justice. Right? A millisiever is like a cumulative dose but when you sequester radiation in your body it pulses energy every second for the rest of your life it pulses energy for extended periods it destroys all your chromosomes all your dna based upon the results of experiments with rodents what about puppies and dogs and cats that you killed the billions of them Finally, the review proposes the research and the health effect of low-level radiation should be prior to arise so that accurate information on the effects of radiation can be disseminated and prevent the prevalence of unnecessary fear lacking scientific justification. In other words, to get you to go away and stop investigating on your own. It's just every facet of these studies is revolting. It's disgusting. It's incredible betrayal. Radiation hazards in children. Lessons from Chernobyl, Three Mile Island. <clears throat> okay, so let me just talk about Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and Fukushima for a second to give you context. 
The South paid dearly, by the way, for the nuclear industry failed renaissance. Three Mile Island was the end of the nuclear renaissance in America because they knew the truth. They just didn't tell it to you. Yeah, that's why the nuclear industry dropped dead, uh, the new build. In fact, there was over 100 new plants were stopped immediately after Three Mile Island because it was harmless. No, because they hid it from you. <clears throat> now, do you think that's 4,000? First off, you can't take a picture of a melter reactor core. <clears throat> My apologies, like it's a little slip, slip, slip of water. So, this is supposed to be the fuel rods in the, in the assemblies, right? And this is supposed to be a nuclear meltdown. You can see the damage, yeah? Well, that's not what you're looking at, is it? Do you think, first off, the zirconium cladding would have, if it's exposed to air, it catches fire and burns that intense, intensively. Second off, it burns at over 4,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures once you start melting the fuel. So all of that would be liquefied immediately. And of course, your camera can't take a picture of this stuff. You can't get close enough to get that picture. That can't be a real picture because the radiation would destroy the cameras and the film. Back in those days, it was film, right? That's not the real picture, see? But that is considered... Now, here's another example of Chernobyl. So this, like, first off, these were... Uh, graphite cores and so that whole room if that was a graphite core the whole room would be full but if I only had a piece of that there the size of my hand and I laid it right here he still couldn't stand up there it's a lethal dose not only that the camera don't work in that environment and of course there's no way he can last long enough to be able to get there and do that he died when he, by the time he can lay eyes on a reactor, chunk of reactor core like that, he drops dead. His organs actually melt. Right? That's what actually happens, see? And so this is fake, but you see this showing up in all kinds of stories about Chernobyl in major media in order to dumb you down, to manipulate you and deceive you, because they haven't gave that up, see? In Belarus, of course, uh, birth rates dropped by half after Chernobyl. Even uh, 2017, radioactive bore in Sweden were 10 times the extraordinary high numbers they call safe. The increase in numbers were absurd numbers, and they're not safe ever under any circumstances. That's what I mean. The industry is actually meets the definition of a monster. The people in the industry 100% unequivocally meet the definition of monsters and goblins and demons. Radi reindeer is still radioactive in Lapia 30 years after Chernobyl. In Scandinavia, Lapia, Scandinavia. So like this stuff has a very long uh, adverse side effects. Decades later, in faraway Chernobyl disaster still contaminates milk. The result, she says, is that children are still drinking contaminated milk, which is heartbreaking. Decades later, that's 2018 story. Exposure causes a array of health problems, including cancer, cardiac, cardiacs, digestive problems, heart problems, liver, lung, diabetes, dementia, autism, Down syndrome. To decrease radiation to acceptable levels just in the village is, that are studied, home to 800 people, costs 80,000 a year. The nuclear industry has never, ever, not a single time, <coughs> contributed to the orphanages in Belarus and Ukraine of disfigured and deformed children. Ever. Never, ever, de never donated a single nickel to those victims. Hang on, I'll show you some pictures. 
But it's life without pictures, right? Now, these are difficult pictures to look at. I'm not going to lie to you, okay? But they're, they're worth looking at. So this is Belarus and Ukraine pictures. Once again, these are very difficult pictures. The nuclear industry has never contributed a nickel for these victims. The nuclear industry has never contributed a single piece of equipment for these victims that are discharted like paper towels. They have no one to love them and are abandoned. They have uh, foundations that go there and try to bring them some relief. But the nuclear industry has never donated a nickel. Never tried to relieve their agony and their misery. Never refuses to acknowledge that they exist. And there's just endless orphanages in Belarus and Ukraine from the Chernobyl fallout. Does that child really need, right, to be have their feet destroyed? No one, like, they have one nurse for every 30 to 40 of these deformed children. And thank goodness these orphanage, these uh, foundations from United Kingdom go there each year and try to bring them something. Because the nuclear industry won't do anything for them. The nuclear industry refuses to help them, refuses to acknowledge them. And they, they take their money and they give it to, uh, to themselves, right? It's outrageous. It's absurd that the nuclear industry won't donate a single nickel to the victims. In fact, the nuclear industry would gladly rape the children if they got a chance. Under 3% of the children exposed to Chernobyl while in the room, womb were diagnosed as healthy at age 7. This is why there's so many orphanages of deformed children there. And in fact, there's over 3 million children. Over 3 million children require permanent treatment because of Chernobyl nuclear meltdown, the carbon-free nuclear. <clears throat> Longitudinal study of appraisal of the Three Mile Island implication for life event research. Raymond Goldston and Karen. So here's a husband and a wife gets to do a study to downplay nuclear. Department of Sociology. The study of the development structure and functioning of human society. How, how would they become a radiation expert? They're not. They're uh, manipulative. That's what they're talking about, being manipulative. The model posits a cause relationship between trust and three mile related authorities. Think about that incredible, arrogant statement. Three mile all in related authorities and perceived danger. Perceived harm to the health, but not perceived psychological distress and psychologically psychological distress. Uh, these plastic and paper suits can't protect you from gamma shines, from x-rays, from neutron. Right? From alpha burst. Nuclear reactor accident leaks radioactive steam. It wasn't a leak. This was incredible hemorrhaging where 2 million people got dosed that they admit to. The Journal of Government Information. The ultimate betrayal. You hire people to do a job and they become a cult and they attack you every chance they get. Three Mile Island Unit 2 Decontamination Recovery Collection. Engineering Library in Pennsylvania State University. And the head of the Engineering Library, Pennsylvania State University. The decade long cleanup project, it was actually 14 years, at Three Mile Island Unit 2, and then another three years to boil off the radioactive water. And nuclear reactor was well documented by technical reports, videotapes, photography, and stills. In fact, uh, Talking about 3,400 videotapes, 6,000 photos, slides, and hundreds of technical reports. 
that are all meant to downplay the adverse effects of it. The decade-long cleanup project was actually 14 years. <clears throat> and the radioactive fallout would have covered all those communities. It doesn't just cover a little tiny section. Radioactive fallout is like saying, it's like saying they had snowstorms that only covered those little tiny areas. Development and safety science domain in the field of general and safety management in 1979, the year of the near disaster. The near disaster where 2 million people got major doses that they admit to. <clears throat> Netherlands, 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 because they were pro-nuclear, see? These management schools of thought, management school of thoughts, an idea or opinion introduced by thinking. Management schools of thoughts. So these are schools of manipulation, schools of deception, schools of mass destruction. <clears throat> Supported by behavioral management. It's called social engineering. It's a very real thing. The nuclear accidents. What do they call these things accidents when they're guaranteed to happen? And why do they call it leaks when it's hemorrhaging out of there? Why are they so dark? Why are they so evil? A note on the stock market reaction to the accident at Three Mile Island. Right, this is one of the very interesting things about nuclear was a lot of it's on the stock market. So they're going to come out and downplay it so they don't lose their stocks. And we've seen like what happened at Fukushima. They went savage. There was 2,000 university students in Taiwan attacked everybody on the planet for about three years. They didn't tell you they were from the Taiwan universities, the nuclear institutions. That came out a few years ago, right? Over 2,000 students were assigned by their universities, by their professors, to go out and pretend that Fukushima was harmless. It was, uh, was harmless like a banana. It was like a potato chip. It was, it was no problem. It was like walking in sunshine. 2,000 students were out there attacking anybody trying to have a conversation. I was under siege for years. <clears throat> 47 people on my show. Unbelievable, eh? Children and pregnant women near a nuclear plant leave. Yeah, because it took them three days before they told them to leave. People just left anyway. Like, if you wait for the government to tell you, there's, say there's an event happening at your nuclear plant, and you're waiting for them to tell you to leave, you're a useful victim. That's all you are. <clears throat> you don't wait for them to tell you anything. You leave. It's absurd. Every facet of nuclear is just disgusting. It's such a despicable people, too. They're such revolting people. Like, you heard that caller yesterday? You heard how arrogant he was? I simp asked him a simple question. He said he was from the Tokyo Bureau. He's from Japan's Tokyo Bureau, in, and he was in Chicago. And Tokyo Bureau, or what? Is that not a legitimate question? He kept repeating the same thing. I asked him seven or eight times, Tokyo Bureau of what? And then he said, it's secret. I just hung up on him because obviously he's a moron. He's a nuclear industry murderer. That's all he is. Journal of American Academy of Child Psychiatry. Another betrayal. Child and parent reaction to the Three Mile Island nuclear accident. That they claimed there was no accident. 35 local children were victimized by psychiatrists, were studied for one and a half years. Children and their parents were studied for one and a half years after Three Mile Island nuclear accident, nuclear event. It's not an accident, it's an event. The children were found to have a level of residual anxiety. Yeah, from being studied for a year and a half like a guinea pig that was not identified by their parents, only by the bizarre psychiatrist. These children also consistently reported stronger 
and more symptomatic responses to the three mile accident for themselves than the parent did for them. <clears throat> this is psychiatrists bullying children, is what you're talking about there. For the children who were psychologically disturbed, showed significant higher low intensities of reaction levels. Did you drug them, Doc? Huh? You piece of shit, did you drug them? Three Mile Island cancers linked to radiation. Of course, you can't get access to these articles. Reactor disassembly activity at Three Mile Island Unit 2 study. The following five years have seen a combination of existing and new technologies brought to bear towards the ultimate goal of decontamination and defueling. It took them 14 years for a non-accident because you had a major melt through. The only reason it takes 14 years is you had a melt through and a melt out. That's why 2 million people got a dose that they claimed is only one millisiever, which is absurd to even suggest that you, the dose is a millisiever. The dose is by atoms, by atomic decays per second. Once again, surrounded by farmland. Every time I see that, I want to scream, eh? Every time I see a nuclear power plant, and almost all of them are surrounded, usually a lot worse than that, are surrounded by farmlands. I, I, I'm actually sick to my guts because I realize how many people is going to eat the food and end up getting sick from it. <clears throat> and then I got no, I got f some stoic people on my show, but it's only 48 wonderful people found my show. I got 57 thumbs up with 24,000 subscribers. We're getting through it, but I mean, you think they're not censoring me? Because there's nobody else on the planet, period, is going to come out and do a presentation, show you all the documentation, walk you through it. How come? It's not hard to do what I'm doing, really, if you know this topic. It's really not hard. And there's a, just an absurd amount of people out there can do a way better job than I can. Not a single nuclear student has showed up to try to have a conversation. Not a single nuclear academic has showed up and tried to have a conversation. Not a single nuclear scientist, not even an academic of any other discipline has ever showed up to have a conversation, yeah? It pisses me off. Uh, but what it reinforces that these are cowards and these are monsters. Health-related economic costs of Three Mile Island. Health-related. 150,000 residents were evacuated for reasons associated with safety and health. No, they weren't. They evacuated on their own. Many residents during and after the accident, regardless of whether they left or stayed, made mental and physical adjustments due to the accident, whether they left or stayed. Because a lot of people knew they were lied to and they left. They moved far, far away from Pennsylvania. It's disgusting. The whole industry is just nothing but disgusting parasites. There are some increases in consumption of alcohol, cigarettes, and tranquilizers. Why would you why would you say that, sick? Oh well their problems are caused by alcohol and cigarettes and tranquilizers, not radioactive fallout, Dana. Yeah. You don't ever want to say that to my face. Ever. You never want to say that to my face. I smack you right in the mouth when you say it to me. The study was funded by the divisions, by the Pennsylvania Department of Health and the Cancer Institute. <laughs> Didn't look for cancer, they looked for cigarettes and tranquilizers and alcohol. You tell me they don't own the system, that they're not scumbags, that they're not degenerate monsters. That's a scary picture with a house and there's uh, stacks, the steam stacks from a nuclear power plant. It's right on the other side of the hill. Literally the worst spot you could ever live is by a nuclear power plant. And anywhere on the planet, that's the worst spot you can live. It's 
Better to live by a crack house than it is by a nuclear power plant. Hostages of each other. This is another study now. The transformation of nuclear safety since Three Mile Island. Hostages of each other. Of course, that's hit away. And the guy with the glasses on is, was the current governor at the time. And the guy to his left is the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's lapdog. And look, they're, why are they wearing um, slip-on booties? <laughs> they attack a moron city. Shows you how powerful the nuclear industry is. We will endure the difficulties. We will endure the difficulties. You're going to pretend that this nuclear fallout is harmless. You're going to pretend that you're immune to nuclear fallout, is what they're saying, right? Not them, but you are. They're going to keep you there and pretend. This year is not a milestone anniversary for the partial meltdown at the Three Mile Island. It is the anniversary that central Pennsylvania will never forget. The partial meltdown. The partial meltdown. The partial meltdown. Oh, you know, the partial meltdown. Do you get what they're doing? Right? Do you get why they do it that way? To manipulate you and deceive you? There's a link below to the story. They talk about uh, 250,000 gallons of radioactive water spills onto the floor. Spills. Spills. But what is 250,000 gallons is 5,555 5, 45-gallon drums of radioactive water. And per liter, it's very dangerous on top of that. <clears throat> so, two, like a gallon of water is still not even a spill on on the floor, that's a lot of water, a gallon of water. Go take a gallon of water and throw it on your floor and see how long it takes you to clean it up. Now take 250,000 gallons of water and put it on your floor and call that a spill. Well, first off, 250,000 gallons, you're going to be swimming in it. You're not going to be touching bottom either. That's a lot of water, yeah? They had the arrogance to call it a spill. Like, is the water in your swimming pool a spill? Is that sp Can you spill water and fill up a swimming pool? Can you spill water and fill up a dozen swimming pools? Because that's what 250,000 gallons is. A sump pump is not going to... Get rid of 250,000 gallons of water. Uh, but what it does tell you is there, there's an absurd amount of radiation because that's radioactive water they're talking about. That's an absurd amount. But anyway, to take you through the timeline, their version of it, I'm not going to do it to you because I get cranky sometimes. And... Uh, um, and so they put everybody, in, you see what you've seen there, they're surrounded, these are people they evacuated, and they never moved them very far away, but they put them in these auditoriums and gave them cardboard boxes to put around them for, for privacy. So people were using cardboard boxes so they can get a, a little bit of privacy in this big open gym, right? Yeah, the nuclear industry is bizarre. Every facet of nuclear is disgusting. It has no right to exist. It actually has no right to exist. In December, the plant was sold to Utah-based energy solutions, and the process of decommissioning the plant will take decades. This was a couple of years ago, that picture. And they've been doing that for a very long time. Well, you don't know if you survived Three Mile Island because... It catches up to you, see? Today in history, this was the typical story on the anniversary. It was a little blurp, blurp. Just a little tiny half sentence. 
A pressure valve in the reactor at Three Mile Island failed to close and caused a near critical meltdown. But it did, it wasn't a near critical, it was a meltdown. And these are some of the official pictures. <clears throat> you can't do that at a nuclear meltdown, see? <clears throat> That's the 250,000 gallons of water. So they bring in all the homeless people. They put them in plastic suits that can't protect you from the gamma shines or the neutrons. So think about what they've done in Japan where they said, suggested a Fukushima draft, like a military draft. And all of Japan must face it. Here was another headline, a doozy from Fukushima, a nuclear meltdown. 60 and older should be prepared to die at the nuclear power plant that melted down. 60 and older should be prepared to die at a nuclear power plant. You tell me that's not bizarre? And then again, the stories like this over and over and over, just a little blurp blurp. America's worst commercial nuclear accident was Santa Susana. But actually, if you look at it realistically, it was Los Alamos, and it was also Hanford. But certainly Santa Susana was 460 times officially more radioactive folly. <clears throat> Again, we see it over and over. America's worst nuclear nuclear power plant leaks radiation. But 2 million people were radiated. That's not a leak. That's an event. That's hemorrhaging. Radiation being invented. Delay and alert assailed. Three miles sealed off. It happened today in history. This was yesterday's. And there's literally only a couple of stories. There was no presentations. There was zero people like us trying to be honest. Zero. Zilt. Nothing. <clears throat> and we basically will let it go at this, I guess. Just a couple more minutes to go. Radiation steam leaked into the atmosphere. No, there was two million people got radiated, for goodness sakes, that they admit to. And then all those farms would have been contaminated. Anybody who ate that would have got sick. That would have been shipped worldwide. And that still continues today, see? Three Mile Island Nuclear Generation Station. Authorized personnel. Observation center is three quarter miles ahead. This is the strangest thing imaginable. They don't do that for coal plant. They don't do this for oil plants. They don't do this for gas plants. But they do it for nuclear. They got Three Mile Island Observation Center. This is how bizarre nuclear actually is. Community groups created to advise Three Mile cleanup. I'd be extremely weary of stuff like that. So they're going to get the local people involved who are, don't know nothing about nuclear. They don't know how to be a checks and balances if you don't know nothing about nuclear. You got to get walked on, right? You're going to be told lies, and then you're going to spend the rest of your time there believing those lies. And they love doing that, right? Because then they're the arbiters, right? The people who don't know any better now are responsible for keeping you safe, who don't know nothing about nuclear. Some of them will, but they're not going to be on your side. Nuclear Nightmare, says Scumbag Time magazine. Again, they show you these fake pictures. Uh, radiation escapes from a nuclear plant. No, it had a nuclear meltdown at Henry Cheddar. It didn't escape. Understanding energy crisis of 1970s and avoiding problems today. That was a, one of the stories that came out. Three Mile Island acts in 1979 put an end to the nuclear power construction heyday. It ended the nuclear renaissance. And Jimmy Carter worked for Admiral Rickover where they developed the first nuclear submarine. Didn't know that one, did you? So he actually knew the technology of nuclear reactors better than any president, better than some of the people that worked at the Atomic Energy Commission. And he also spent time on recovery efforts at Chalk River in Canada. I covered that a little bit yesterday, right? With Rod Adams claiming the reason Jimmy Carter didn't get sick and die 
of pancreatic cancer like his brother, his two sisters, his dad, and his mom was because he was at a nuclear meltdown that made him stronger like Spider-Man and the Hulk. The, the nuclear industry, people in the nuclear industry are revolting parasites. This, we've been at this for years and years and years. I've never seen nothing but revolting parasites, ever. Not a single time. I've never seen a single redeeming quality in the nuclear industry, not one. All I've seen is scum, degenerate monsters and cowards, mostly cowards and monsters, mostly revolting on top of that. Carter was 21 years old and he was sent into a nuclear meltdown and Rod Adams wants you to believe that that's why he didn't die of pancreatic cancer because he was exposed to anthropogenic man-made radiation. Literally the stupidest thing you can imagine. So he would be the best president you want to have if there's a nuclear accident. Now he was firmly entrenched lapdog that they could blackmail, see? And he did. This was a study that came out, this is important. This study, uh, so after Three Mile Island, they were using coal, right? But the radioactive fallout causes birth problems, underweight. That's well known. And so they tried to blame it on the coal. There was actually studies that showed that children, after the energy, after Three Mile Oil and Accident, Tennessee, see how I done that? Because they're not going to do it to you. After the Three Mile Oil and Accident, the weight of newborns fell by 5.4%. They're trying to blame that on coal, an increased use of coal. We didn't see that show up everywhere else coal is used, though. Only at the nuclear meltdown. But the scum, the absolute scum degenerate industry came out with that study. So we would see that around all coal plants, right? No. Only at Three Mile Island, see? Again, this is the adverse side effects of radioactive fallout. And again, you can see you can't trust a single word from the nuclear industry. You can't trust... Uh, you literally couldn't trust him to tie your shoes. And we already covered this story that... The Three Mile Island Reactor Core is not in uh, Idaho National Laboratory 860 square miles site. You can't move a melted reactor core, for goodness sakes. <clears throat> anyway. Anyway, that's it, I guess. Job well done. Shut Three Mile Island. Shut all nuclear. Nuclear is nothing but monsters. That's all they are. 2468, we don't want to radiate, no. Their entire legacy of the IAEA is how do we kill the biggest population? How, how do we do it? We did get a couple of donations last night, thank goodness. And Eve's uh, Dubois donated a hundred dollars. I thought I see Eve in the the S is silent. I think. Don't quote me. My apologies if I butcher your names. My apologies. Yeah, and uh, he's actually got his name backwards there in the comment section, so I'm not sure if I'm supposed to use your whole name, I apologize. Too late, I won't do it. I usually use the initials for the last name, right? And Lance C donated 20. We're trying to raise money to fix the Argo, and I think it's gonna be a lot less than, it's not a lot less, but less than 2,000 to fix that. We gotta rebuild the engine, and so we're raising money to get the kit, once I got the 
rebuild kit. Then I'm going to bring the engine the rebuild kit to a mechanic and get them to put the engine back together. They also got to take the pistons out and redo the pistons, etc., etc. And we're raising money uh, for a proper tool set because I got so much equipment. I actually can't keep up with anything anymore. The best thing to do is get a tool kit. That'll save me a fortune long run. See? It'll actually save me a fortune. I don't want to do the work. I'm not even healthy, but I'll, I'm going to do the work because I can't afford to pay mechanics all the time, right? We got a big operation and equipment's getting old and wearing out and breaking down on me. And I can do the work and so I will. Even though I'm not healthy, but I can do the work. So it's the right thing for me is to do the work because that'll save thousands of dollars each year, right? And we need to raise roughly a thousand dollars worth of equipment. You're looking at three. We're going to head back out on the expedition. Spring is now here. And weather's going to start warming up starting on Thursday. I'll start, uh, once my neck heals up a bit more, I'll head back out on the trail looking for birds. Because uh, each, now, uh, I had a weird dream a couple of days ago. I wasn't sleeping very good anyway because of my neck. And I had this weird dream, and I woke up, and it was the weirdest dream. So the dream was, the dream was to go right down. Oh, we got Chris calling it. Yeah, hi, Chris. Hang on there. I'll get you on the microphone, or on the speaker. You're on the speaker, Chris. Go ahead. Dana. Yeah. Okay. Happy 42. <laughs> Thank you, um, Chris. And Chris, Chris is in the comments section right now, folks. Uh, Chris Owen is the guy who's calling in right now in your comments section. Go ahead, Chris. No, no, that's not me. I'm not Owen. Oh, you're I'm not? Chris Otten. No, that's somebody else. Oh, uh, I thought Chris that was you. Chris, I'm an Chris. idiot. My apologies. No, no, it's Sorry, okay. Chris it's Owen. Okay. There's a lot of... Hey, uh, Dana, thank you. one, thank you so much. I'm encouraging everybody to donate your way, okay? Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, you know, I just want to emphasize uh, how important this is that the consistency of the reporting on a yearly basis, almost yearly, that you've been doing with the surveys... Right. is what the scientists aren't doing, right? The scientists who are paid millions of dollars and all the schools and all these professors, they aren't doing what you're doing, you and Kevin Blanche. So I just want to encourage everybody to be putting some money up to get the Argo ready to get your Arctic Cat. Well, you got that done. That's, That's done, yeah. Huge. Arctic Cat's um, done, yeah. That's a big deal, yeah. So next thing is after, after people donate, can I recommend you've made um this point uh several times uh over the years about the chemo and the dangers just the insanity of the of the radiation industry to keep nuking us after they've already given us cancer <laughs> and i guess what i wanted to check in with you about is to see if you know any green doctors, any anybody where you can do a show on what we need to do to uh, mitigate, chelate, get rid of the radiation that we are absor absorbing. Um, I, you've probably done one already, but maybe do another one again soon, uh, where we can we can proactively help all your listeners. Um, kind of stay as healthy as possible while we're getting bombarded. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like the idea. That's a good idea. Okay. I'll definitely work on that. All right, man. Let you go. Anything else? Yep, I appreciate you, Dana. Thank you so much. Okay, Chris, thank you. Again, my apologies. Take All care. Right. And then my apologies to Chris Owen in the comment section, who donated, right, I showed it yesterday, 150 on the weekend to me. I thought you guys were the same person, right? Because he's Chris Odin. You're Chris Owen, right? But uh, obviously I'm... I don't know why I assumed that. My apologies again. Okay, uh, let's call it a show. That was a great show. And I was trying to make one more point. Uh, I had this weird dream. And it's not a weird dream, but it was an important dream. I woke up. 
I got out of bed and I went and got a pen and a paper and I wrote on the paper, because this is what the dream told me when I woke up, was to go to all the dumps when the weather breaks and look for birds. <laughs> Strange, right, isn't it? But have you ever went to the dump and you remember seeing tens of thousands of seagulls and crows? But it was the strangest thing imaginable where I woke up and I understood, right? I needed to write that down so I didn't go back to sleep and forget about it. It was like, it was like an epi it wasn't an epiphany, it was a voice telling me to get up and write it down. And so I did, and it sits on my counter right now. <laughs> and I look at it uh, yesterday in the day, uh, is to, once the weather breaks and the snow goes, is to great check each community, go find a dump and go in and see if there's birds. <clears throat> and because that's highly visible, see? And uh, I happen to be into my the local dump here when we had a melt out here where all the snow melted last week and there was no birds there. Maybe that's why I had the weird dream. See, it, it resonated, finally sunk into me or something. Uh, but we had snow yesterday, we had a snowstorm yesterday, but it didn't stay. It'll be gone by, say, Friday, all the snow. I'll head back down and I'll send a drone over the dump and we'll have a boo. Anyway, that's the show. Give us a thumbs up. And like Lane says, seagulls and buzzards at the dumps near there. I'll give a shout out to hide a few people in the comments section. That's the end of the show for anybody. Uh, Dana Nasana, hi Dana. Prevoke. And Eves, uh, Du Bois, thank you again. Elaine Campbell, hugs for Lane. Hi Elaine. Uh, Blue J.O. Post, Misty Cat. John Davis, I am human. I'll come down and catch the most recent comments. Uh, Chris Owen, my apologies to poor Chris again. James Lucid, hi James, my friend. God bless you. I hope you're doing well. Missed you yesterday because you probably didn't know I was going to go early, right? And uh, Christopher Lieber, there's three Chris's we got today on the show. Stop Greed Johnson, you're welcome, thank you. And then the obsolete optics. Yeah, food is irradiated coming across the border. And I rallied against it. I used to do it all the time, I gotta get back at it. That's disgusting to radiate your food. And I despise United Nations. I have a whole folder on that subject. I should do an entire show on it just to really help articulate why that's so insidious. Uh, Jennifer Wolf, hi Jennifer. And Misty Cat again, just in case I didn't say hi. Purple Mambo. And I'm just looking for people to give a quick shout out. Herb, hi Herb, a long time. Herb's been around a long time. Hope you're doing good. And I'll just come down very quickly to the most recent comments in a second here. And we'll shut it down. Uh, tricky who? And tomorrow there'll be a link under my video. The first link will be to a song that one of you guys posted. Um, piano music with uh, some of my narrative. Done a great little job on it. Uh, some key points. I'll put that underneath it. A link to that actual video of the morals for people and go over and check it out it's a good video to give to send to your friends because it's a short video but it's really right to the point and tricky wise i think we got everybody basically or tricky who rather uh dark ones s yeah, Australia is full of radiation from all the nuke tests. In fact, uh, Maralinga, they did on, the British done nuclear testing 
<clears throat> off Maralinga Island in Australia and 2,400 kilometers away in Adelaide, the capital of Australia at that time, was over 96,000 counts per minute from the radioactive fallout from the nuclear testing, 2,400 kilometers away. So radioactive fallout travel very far in very big quantities, right? You know, that is staggering numbers on top of that. These are staggering Looks like we're through it. I'll come down to the most recent comments. Thank you, Eve. I appreciate it. Uh, Nerop uh, Yilof, Nerad Yilof, check my emails. Okay, I will so. Thank you. November the 15th, 1961. <laughs> Great name. Yeah. Yeah, Chris, all. Bye bye. Thank you again. Uh, 12B Georgia. Glenn Muse. Thank you, Glenn. Okay, looks like we got through it all. Anybody extra? Thank you, everybody. I remind everybody that's new, uh, there's links below my video. There should be anyway. It's under all my videos to how you can donate to me. And I got a long way to go to fix things and get all the equipment we need for the spring and, and the summer and the fall research projects. We, we got most of it, actually. I shouldn't say a long way to go, but we still... To me, it's a long way, right? It's a, I, I don't like trying to raise money. It's better if you can just go do it and forget about it and keep working, right? I, but raising money is something that we have to do around here because I'm censored heavily and everything is so precious, right? Okay, that's it for today. And my neck is a bit better. I did sleep pretty good last night, thank goodness, which is the first night. It was still 4 a.m. before I finally got to sleep. But uh, I slept pretty good, comfortable, I thought, compared to the last number of days. Since Thursday, has been pretty, pretty tough go. God bless everybody. Hugs for everybody. Michael, Mike, Norman. Good night, everybody, or good day. It's um, it's at 2.47 p.m. my time, where I'm to. And so tomorrow night we'll be at the regular scheduled time, which is six hours from right now. My show normally starts. It's six hours from whatever time it is where you're to right now, if you're on the live show, that is. That's what time my show normally starts. And we'll get on that tomorrow night. And if you can, give us a thumbs up. Costs a little and goes a long way. God bless everybody. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Take care, folks. <laughs>